Hello and welcome to my channel IELTS Listening. Let's start with one of the best practice tests for improving listening skills. The test is in four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. Part one. You will listen to an interview with Mr. Sergeant and a customer care officer of a vacuum cleaning company. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello. Yes, hello. It's Tom Burlinson calling from Clean It Vacuum Cleaners. Mr. Sergeant, is it? Yes. I understand you recently purchased a vacuum from us. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Well, this is simply a call to find out if you've been happy with your purchase. Our company prides itself on its after-sales service. Just because you've bought from us doesn't mean you're no longer important to us. Could you spare a few moments to answer some questions? Sure. How long will this take? Well, not long at all, Mr. Sergeant. Usually only about three or four minutes. Okay. What would you like to know? Okay, great. I'll just go through the survey form, and uh, if you'll just bear with me, this shouldn't take long at all. Uh, okay, first question. Which model did you purchase and when? Yes, it was the Super Cleaner. We bought it about two weeks ago. Uh, let's see, it was a Monday, I think, because my wife's birthday was on the Sunday, 24th. Uh, that would make it the 25th. Yes, August the 25th. Okay. Now, do you remember the name of the salesperson? Was he worth remembering? Yes, his name was Jim. My wife and I were very impressed with him. He was a great source of information, very helpful. Great. I'll make sure that your kind words about Jim are passed on to him. Okay, now let's see. Ah, yes. Have you purchased any other products from us this year? Oh, let's see. Uh, of course, we bought the Super Cleaner. I think that's all. Well, we bought some vacuum bags with it as well. Um, uh, I think Daisy bought some carpet cleaner from your store back in February. That's about all, I think. I have to ask my wife about that one. She's not here at the moment. No, no, that's okay. Your answer will do fine. We don't have to be too picky. Okay, so how much money would you say you've spent all told in the store? Just an approximate amount will do fine. Wow, that's a difficult question. Uh, I don't really know. The, the vacuum was £150. The other stuff, I'd say around £15, I suppose the total was around £165. But I couldn't be totally sure. It may be a bit more than that. That's fine. That's fine. Now, the next thing on my list is how would you rate the quality of the products you purchased? Good, actually. Very good. So far, we've not had any problems with the products from Clean It. Service and value have been very good. So I guess you have a loyal customer. Oh, wonderful. I'm really pleased that your experience with our company has been a positive one. Tell me, do you purchase any other items of cleaning equipment? If so, from whom? I'm very fussy about the interior of my car, you know. The seats and carpets, I found a product from Easy Clean which works well on the carpets and an air freshener from Mr. Tidy that really smells good. Apart from that, oh, I couldn't say for sure, I think my wife buys floor cleaner from Johnson Brothers. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, we've just introduced a new line of car freshness. You might like to stop by. We'll offer you a 20% discount. Okay, we're almost to the end of the questions. Now, I know you were happy with Jim, 
but overall, how would you rate the quality of our service? Fine, I thought it was good. The lady in accounts was a little unfriendly, but overall I would say the service was quite good actually. Jim made all the difference, and you certainly seem to be a very nice person. Oh, thanks Mr Sergeant. Please, uh, Tom, call me Terry. Oh, okay, Terry, very good. Second last question. We're thinking of expanding our trading hours. When are the best times, the most convenient for you to shop? Oh, I'm not a shopper. I mostly leave it all up to my wife. She works full time. Let's see, for me, I guess I'd have to say Sundays between 1 and 3, and uh, I'm not working on Thursdays now, so if I had to, I guess Thursdays between, say, 11 and 12 noon. Okay. Last question, Mr Sergeant. Terry. Do you have any other suggestions for us? Anything at all? Well, come to think of it now, there was one thing. Turn up the air conditioner. I seem to remember sweltering in there, and it was unpleasant and hot. Also, and this is just me, I always like to have some music playing, you know, quietly in the background. It just makes the place seem friendlier, you know, more professional. Well, I'll certainly mention that to management. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for your time, Terry. If there is anything we can do in the future to help you, don't hesitate to call us. Okay, bye now. Yes, bye bye, and thanks again. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk about Bell College. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Welcome to Bell College. The aims of the college is to foster the growth of international understanding through the provision of a high standard educational course. Second, the college is based in a residential setting for adult students from abroad. And last is to make a positive contribution to the development of teaching English as a foreign language. Bell College is one of a group of schools run by the Bell Educational Trust, a non-profit making educational foundation. The college offers an attractive environment for study and leisure for students aged 18 or over. 160 students live in comfortable single and twin study bedrooms on the campus and a further 70 or 80 with carefully selected local families. The excellent common room facilities in the college are matched by the extensive gardens and sports fields. Superb academic facilities including a modern learning centre and library and sophisticated computer networks are available for students use in class hours and in the evenings and at weekends. A wide range of courses is offered in three areas. The main English program, teacher training and English for specific purposes. The teaching staff are highly qualified native speakers with wide experience of working in schools, colleges and universities in many parts of the world. Living in an international community of 30 or more nationalities is an important part of the Bell College experience. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. The main English program, teacher training, and English for specific purposes. The teaching staff are highly qualified native speakers with wide experience of working in schools, colleges, and universities in many parts of the world. Living in an international community of 30 or more nationalities is an important part of the Bell College experience. Great stress is laid on pastoral care and the college has its own medical centre. A busy and interesting programme of sporting, cultural and social activities is provided in the evenings and at weekends with excursions to many parts of Britain. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear some students talking about an art assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. What have you been working on, Arthur? I've been looking into the funding of the arts by the Arts Association. Oh, Mr Simpson gave you that topic, did he? Yes, it's not too difficult. At least all the facts and figures are easy to find, or I think they will be. <laughs> I've done a lot of useful stuff already. Simpson hasn't asked me to present my research for the past few seminars, so I think he might ask me this time. Hmm. Well, what have you found out? Well, it's big money at the Arts Association. £330 million from the government and £118 million from the lottery. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I've got my notes here. Now... The Arts Association mission statement tells us that it exists to develop, sustain and promote the arts. Mm. So that's clear, but then we need to know exactly how it can do this. However, before we get to that, there are certain issues which the Association must take into account. What are those issues? They are, first, access. This is the idea that the arts mustn't be just for the few. Not just Italian opera, but pop concerts too. Something like that. Other issues are education, cultural diversity, social regeneration and social inclusion. Hmm. All these are different ways of saying that the arts are for everyone. All right, but what does it actually do? It does what it wants, I think. The government does not interfere in its activities, but demands that it gets value for money for its funds. But there must be certain programmes that it carries out. Oh, yes. There is the touring programme, mm. which is what it says. That is, a programme to support... Give money to? Yes, that's right. To support touring companies, mm. for example, dance companies, orchestras and so on. There is also the recovery programme. What on earth is that? Uh, it's a financial program to give extra money to organisations which are financially in a bad way or which might have financial difficulties in the future. Mm. Like it says, it's for their recovery. It all seems very complicated. Uh, it is. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Did you get any information on the reading for the other half of our work? Yes, I did. You mean the Art and Society module? Yes. Yes. I met Simpson himself as we were waiting for a train at Norchester Station, so I managed to ask him. Any luck? Yes. I've got the notes I took here. Oh. He told me, of course, to start with Greenberg, mm. who covers contemporary art and the up-to-the-minute movements in America. It's about the modern movements, really. As far as the economic impact of art is concerned, a basic text is the Parliamentary Report on Art and the UK Economy. Mm. This gives lots of monetary facts and figures, but the figures are not very satisfactory, as, of course, a lot of the information is confidential and can't be published. Art Now, Art Wow by someone called Denison sounds exciting, and is about how art and artists are created, presented for buyers, and sold in the US. It's about the whole trade in art as a phenomenon. Like a product? Like washing powder? Yes. <laughs> That's the idea of the book, anyway. <sighs> And there's another one here, oh yes, by someone called Hampton. It's a book called American Art, which Simpson says is full of discussion on the relationship of art to the other aspects of culture, such as film, television, books and so on. Popular culture, I suppose. Not just popular. Culture of all sorts, I imagine. Finally... For the spiritual and more abstract aspects of art, he recommends Art and the Mind of Modern Man by Frick. Mm. It's sort of about how art relates to how we think. He did have lots of other recommendations, but luckily his train arrived before he could move on to them. <laughs> These seem enough to me. <laughs> yes, they're a good place to start. We will be busy. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear part of a lecture about the school calendar. Listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. So, having seen that the six-term system has passed the test of cost-effectiveness, we can move on to the educational aspects of this arrangement. Firstly, all the terms would be approximately the same length. Instead of terms up to 13 weeks, which we have now, there could be a repeating pattern of seven weeks of term time plus two weeks of vacation. This would be repeated six times per year. How does this affect the effectiveness of the educational provision? The most noticeable result would be that the very long summer holiday would be reduced in length. This byproduct of the six-term system could be beneficial. There's plenty of evidence of huge learning loss by pupils during the summer holidays. By learning loss, we mean the amount that pupils forget or lose during a holiday break. Ashley carried out a number of analyses which showed this conclusively. He investigated 39 studies examining the effects of summer holidays on standardised test scores. His analyses indicated that summer learning loss equaled two weeks to seven weeks of instruction. On average, children's test scores were three weeks lower than when they left school in the previous term. He also found differences in the learning loss effect according to subject. The subjects he analysed were reading, writing and maths. 
and he found that the effect was greatest in maths and reading. Furthermore, although all social groups experienced roughly similar learning loss in the field of maths, the studies found that disadvantaged children showed even greater losses in reading skills. So, the problem of learning loss in traditional schools is clear. However, the results of studies into the six-term system and learning loss are ambiguous. Marchmont found that pupils in six-term schools maintained their test scores after the shorter holiday period. This is certainly an improvement on the traditional system where, as we have seen, pupils perform worse after the summer break. Benson, however, found no differences between those in traditional schools and on the six-term schedule. It would seem reasonable that if long holidays result in learning loss, then shorter holidays should result in less learning loss. So, we await the outcome of further studies. Historically, of course, everyone knows the reason for our system of three terms per year. In days when agriculture was of much greater importance in our working lives, it was essential that the children helped with the harvest. Later on, this changed, and more people moved into the towns. But then there was a new problem. Before air conditioning, it was very impractical to try to teach children in the summer months. Nowadays, that's no longer a barrier. One way of providing something different is the summer school. Here, there is a completely different kind of educational provision. Cooper and others investigated 93 summer schools and the results they achieved. They all had a positive effect on learning. Most summer schools, of course, have small classes and class size was shown to have a positive effect. Additionally, summer school children usually benefit from a great deal of parental support, not least because payment of fees is involved, and this, as so often, was shown to produce very good outcomes. Results were most impressive, in maths in general. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Dear viewers, thank you for taking this listening test. Please let me know about your score in the comments section below. Keep on practicing. It's the only way to be successful. We are planning to upload more IELTS helpful videos. Please subscribe to our channel, IELTS Listening. Thank you.